Hello, I'm Panos Kodzathanasis, and this is Bad Accent Video Reviews. Today we're going to speak about uh, Bakemono by Doug Ross, a film that uh, recently screened in uh, Japan Film Fest Hamburg, but we're also doing a video review after the written one that was published a bit a while ago on the website. Okay. The Okay, the, the main premise of the movie is quite simple and it involves a, a, a multitude of guests that visit the same Chim, Chip Tokyo Airbnb at different times, unaware of the gruesome creature waiting for them. This includes a guy and what seems to be a prostitute, a man talking to himself about falling in love with a hostess, three girls of student, of student age, while at some point we also meet uh, the owner of the room who eventually appears with his appearance actually providing a dichotomy to the two different aspects let's say of the film since after his appearance we also have a new group of people who this time however seem to fight back towards the monster while the first ones mostly fell victims to it almost immediately uh, okay, one thing that happens is that the master appears when the inhabitants uh, have bad feelings or they are fighting or in general in a bad state, which I'm not sure if it is done on purpose, but actually works for the film, me essentially implying that the appearance of the master also signifies something else. Okay, uh, the appearance of the monster happens over a, a multitude of cases that are presented at the same time through Mondas in the two different uh, parts that I just mentioned. So it means like in the first one, we have uh, uh, a number of different cases that uh, each scene presents one after the other what is happening successively. Uh, this approach can get confusing, particularly in the beginning where it's difficult to understand what is happening and where is where and when is when. And also because uh, the room that the whole thing takes place does not have any characteristic aspects to make it stand out. So it, it makes it difficult to realize it is the same room. Okay, gradually it becomes apparent, but in the beginning at least uh, it could be confusing. Uh, also, the presence of the monster, the presence of the monster, essentially dictates the narrative, and uh, it's easy to say that uh, the creators of the of the movie, okay, Doug Ross seems to have done most of the things in the film by himself. Uh, so, in that regard, it's easy to say that the master is the master's presentation is excellent. Uh, it is impressive to watch. It's gruesome. It's grotesque. It's very, very scary. It's uh, disgusting. It's okay. All the things that fans of Splatter would definitely adore. Uh, it reminded me Brain Dead by Peter Jackson. If you remember that old film, uh, it has some similar abilities, let's say, and and it uh, definitely okay. The whole movie seems to revolve around the master, and it's definitely a good thing that it's as good. The, its presentation is as good as it is in this film. Uh, okay, also. Uh, the fact that the second group of people fight, fight back is also makes makes the film more interesting to say because we, we are seeing okay, some reaction finally and it's not just one monster killing people in the most gruesome way. Um, okay, uh, 
the action is not exactly great. Like there is a girl that fights with the monster with uh, a knife and stabs it repeatedly, but this appro this sequence gets too repetitive after a fashion. It happens a number of times in the way that I also mentioned before. Like it is this sequence, and then we move to the other sequence of another pe person fighting the monster, and then the other, and so on and so on. Uh, while the second uh, American, she seems to be an American, it could be English, okay, a foreigner. Uh, he fights uh, with uh, with a spray, which, okay, gives the master a sense that it's also something like a cockroach. And this, I can say, it's even a bit funny to, to see a guy trying to kill this monstrosity with a spray. It's kind of funny, but also works in terms of entertainment. Uh, okay, on uh, okay, the main character, the owner of the film, is played by Takashi Irie, who is always a pleasure to watch, and he is quite good throughout the film. At some point, we will start to learn more about him and his connection to the master, and then the whole thing makes sense to a point at least. And uh, it seems that this is what brings a twist to the narrative, which also works quite well. Okay, maybe it gets a bit too far in terms of how the drama is presented and uh, his interactions with his wife, but okay, this is a splatter horror thriller film and that is okay for such a style of narrative. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, Yukina Takase's Tomoko, Yurika Natsume's Reina, uh, Marilyn Kawakami as Anna, Miki Nomura as Risa, Laila Chiba as Nozomi, while the two Americans are played by Dominic Early and Connor Line. I, I have to say all actors do a satisfying job. Okay, there are victims and they fight back, so it's not exactly a dialogue-heavy narrative focused on drama. So in that regard, I'd say they are functional. We also have some sex scenes that also work quite well in the same entertainment-like path. In general, okay, the, the film is definitely worth a look, particularly for the monster and, okay, to a point for the story. But I feel that uh, the choice by the director to have the narrative presented, as I mentioned, uh, does not make that much sense. And also because after a point you realize that there are some back and forth in time that make the whole thing even more confusing. I felt that if that element uh, was not there, the movie would be on a higher level. But even as that, and even if the story is a bit confusing, particularly in the beginning, I feel that there is a lot to enjoy here. And uh, the fans of Splatter will definitely have fun with this one. So that's it for today also. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Have a nice day.